So hi guys. Uh, uh, today our speaker is Professor Shamik Banerjee from Institute of Physics, and uh, uh, he's going to talk about celestial amplitudes and uh, what exactly the title? Celestial amplitudes and what? And uh, flat space ho ho hol holography. Yeah. So thank you, Shamik, for giving this talk. This is the 93rd lecture in this series, QSTM series. And we are very thankful to have you here. And hopefully we can learn a lot of new things uh, from this uh, lecture. So you can start. OK, uh, thanks, uh, Shantan. So OK, so I'll be talking about some recent work on, uh, well, some recent works on uh, celestial amplitudes. and flat space holography. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So let me start by defining uh, what is holography. Okay. So we are more or less uh, we are all familiar with this term. And this is essentially the statement that suppose you have a space time, uh, which I call M, okay? And this is the, so M is the space time, and this is the boundary of the space time. Okay, which we can call the del of M. Okay, and then holography is roughly the statement that quantum theory of gravity on space time on M is dual or equivalent to. Uh, quantum field theory on the boundary del of M, okay? Now, what I mean by quantum field theory is that, well, so it's the usual quantum field, th field theory and more uh, particularly, it has, there is no dynamical gravity, okay, on the boundary. So roughly the statement is that a theory of gravity uh, on in so, Shami, yeah. I have yeah. maybe it's very, uh, uh, very uh, like basic question. Maybe we'll- Yeah, yeah just go ahead. Yeah, I mean, don't- uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like why dy no dynamical gravity particularly? Yeah, so that is essentially, so uh, he, he gives some uh, exa examples, uh, so then there will be, okay. So uh, are you talking about, so this is basically any dimension or basically, basically three or two dimension or something like that? Well, not three and two dimensions, so yeah, so I'll come to that actually. So I'll give some ex examples and then it will be clear. Okay. Sure. So in some uh, known examples, so a theory of gravity on a M is equivalent to a theory uh, without gravity. Okay. Okay, so what is the known, uh, most well-known example of this is the ADS-CFP correspondence. Okay, which says that string theory on ADS D plus one 
Okay, so D plus one is the, the dimension of the ADS is equal to a CFT. So this is a conformal field theory. On boundary on del ADS D plus one, uh, which well, which can be well, which is some uh, space for example, depending on you can have uh, say which can be R D D minus one comma one or S D minus <coughs> or S D minus one comma R one things like that. Okay. So here the D, of course, uh, well, I mean, you can't have all the A's. So basically since, well, so here D plus one, since I'm just talking about string theory, so D plus one must be less, less than uh, 11. Well, so it is not, well, so, well, this is not exactly the A. So, well, it is D plus one times some internals space okay to be more precise say the type 2b string theory on ads5 cross s5 is dual to n equal to 4 super young mills on boundary which is say r r3 comma 1 or s3 cross r1 whatever okay so that is essentially the statement so you also have this internal space and uh, but the point is that the non non compact space is the ads5 and so if you and that's what I meant here actually that ADS D plus one, that string theory on ADS D plus one times some internal space is equivalent to a, a conformal field theory on, on the boundary of the ADS D plus one, which is D dimensional. Okay. So you can see that uh, in this case, I have D plus one is equal to five. And so D is four. So it is either R three comma one or S three cross R R one. Okay. So depending on whether you are in ionic attach or in low locality areas. So these are uh, basically the most uh, well studied example. So of, this okay. example that yeah. you is the well-known Maldasinas paper, probably. Uh, your voice is breaking actually, yeah. Yeah, so I was saying that this is the well-known Maldasinas. Yeah, so this is essentially uh, the Maldasena correspondence, you can call it, yeah. Yeah. This was conjectured by Maldasena. Okay, so now, yeah, right, right, yes. So this is the oldest one actually. And the, so that's why it, it is basically the most well-known example, yeah. Okay, okay, so now uh, the question is similar uh, correspondence for, I mean, there is also, like DSCFT thing. So this is like Witten, Strominger. Okay. But now actually, but I'll, I'll be talking about something which is not uh, ADS or DS, but I'll be talking about asymptotically flat space time. Okay. Okay, so we can start with, for example, the Penrose diagram. So now uh, you can start. Uh, we can start with the Penrose diagram of the Minkowski space. Okay, so 
So you have a diagram like this. So this is the Minkowski space. This is the null infinity. This is the future null infinity. This is the past null in infinity. And these are the uh, spherical cross sections of the, uh, of the future and the past null infinity. And I'll be talking about four dimensional space time. Okay. So this cry plus minus, so that is uh, null infinity and their null hypersurfaces. Okay, since uh, I'm talking about the four dimensional space time, so cry, uh, so scry plus minus, so they are three dimensional null hypersurfaces. Okay, and these are the, so I have drawn, so what I have drawn here, uh, it's a line cone. So this is a future line height one of a point in the Minkowski space, and this one is a past. And they actually cut the scry plus in a say in a spherical cross section. So this is an S two, and this is another S two. Okay, so they are so this S two. So this is a space like. cross section hmm, of scry plus minus, okay? And the point is that this S2 is also known as the celestial sphere. Okay. So these are the, so this is future, this is past. And the point is that, so in this case, the M, so the space time, so the bulk space time in this case is essentially, suppose, space time is asymptotically Minkowskian. Okay, and what is the boundary? Boundary is the scribe plus minus. Okay, and essentially the conjecture for the flat space holography or the celestial holography is that the quantum gravity on M is actually equivalent to a conformal field theory or M4 state uh, living on the celestial sphere. It's two. So, uh, can you be able to hear me, Shamik? Yeah, yeah. Please so go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Gravity means you want to talk about the partition function. Uh, well, quantum gravity, well, so partition function is one thing which you can compute. Uh, but the thing is that, well, so what we are interested in this, this case, so since we are in asymptotically flat space, what we want to uh, compute is essentially the S matrix. Okay, okay. 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 So S matrix is the observable. Okay, so what we want is that the quantum gravity in the bulk computes S matrix 
for example, string theory does this thing, we all know. Okay, and so the dual CFT on celestial sphere, which let me call that C is two, should also compute the same S metric. Okay. Now, where does this? So, let me explain it just uh, point by point. So, so where does the CFT come from? Well, so it is not completely. But the point point is that uh, one way to see this is that if you think of the so, how does the uh, well, so this basically depends on these facts. So number one is that in, in D equals four or in three plus one, the Lorentz group is SL2C, okay? So this is actually the double cover of SO3 comma one. Okay, now what is SL2C? So this is the group of two by two complex matrices with determinant one. Okay, so if suppose if A is an SL2C matrix, so you can write, suppose I write it as A, B, C, D. So it's a two by two complex matrix. So A, B, C, D are uh, complex numbers and the determinant of this is one. So A, B minus B, C is one, okay? Now the point is that one can show, so, that this Lorentz group SL2C acts on the celestial sphere uh, as the group of global conformal transformation. Okay, so how does one uh, see this thing? So it is, well, we know that, uh, that this fact we of course know that the, uh, that the group of uh, global con conformal transformations of, a of S2 is actually the SL2C, okay? And so the point is that if you have a theory, so if you have, uh, theory on CS2, so it better be conformal, it better be CFT because the theory must be Lorentz invariant, which is in this case, this uh, group of global conformal transformation, okay? But it's not the complete story because, well, in two dimension, uh, uh, conformal field theory has an infinite uh, dimension. So in 2D, CFT, of course, has a Virasoro symmetry, which is an infinite dimension. Uh, well, I mean, one can, well, uh, one can, well, so that I will not uh, go into that, but one can show that you can define a stress tensor and that can be done. 
but it's not so uh, straightforward. So I'll not go into this in this talk because this is a very basic. Hello. I take it as 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 no. Okay. So now, um, okay. So this is essentially the thing. But now. The point is that, so what is the statement? The thing is that the CFT, CFT2, the two-dimensional CFT on CS2, so must compute the S matrix in four-dimensional asymptotically slab space time okay so this is the thing that this uh, dual so the okay so the dual cft2 on cs2 must compute the s matrix in four dimensional uh, asymptotically flat space time and if you can find out a uh, conformal field theory which does its job, then actually what you have found is essentially the dual of the string theory or the co quantum gra gravity in, uh, in flat space time. Okay. So now actually I will uh, describe some, uh, well, some ways in which, uh, well, at least uh, one can try to do this. Uh, so that actually, so in order to do that, one useful thing uh, that one can define is called the celestial amplitudes. Okay, so I'm just be talking about massless particles because that is the simplest thing to do uh, and also important because all the gauge particles they are all uh, massless so if you are interested in uh, so for exa example gluon graviton things like that okay okay so now let me just uh, say that how a scattering process looks like in that space time Okay, so you send something in, some particles which are in, in state, okay, and they interact in this uh, region and then something come out and let's assume that we have only massless things, okay, for example, uh, suppose you have say QCD or just GR, okay, so you only have massless fields, okay. So something goes in, they interact and something actually comes out and they all reach sky plus, okay? Now, so in order to do, do this, what we have to do is that first let us define what we call this uh, spatial amp amplitudes and what is the way to do that? Now, so the massless particle states, so, so the massless uh, single particle states are of this form, okay, P mu sigma, where P mu is a uh, four momentum. And sigma is the helicity.
okay now it is massless so this thing is null and one way one good way of writing this so this means that you can write your mu as e to the energy one comma n hat okay what is this n hat so this n hat is essentially the direction of motion of the massless particle okay and e is the energy okay so now so this is one way of writing this thing but uh, but what we can do is that is the following since p mu p mu is zero so that tells you that this n hat n hat is one so that's a unit vector okay and this tells you that the space the space of all possible directions of motion of massless particle is uh, s2 right because you change in and so you can write it in this way so this is s2 and this is n hat okay as you change n hat you describe a sphere and s2 okay and so you can write so let us write this n hat in this way so i introduce the two coordinates so these are the stereographic So the ZZ bar so what you can uh, so now you can see that if you you can also write this z in this way that this p1 in terms of the component of p p mu as p1 plus i p2 by p0 plus p3 where p0 is essentially what they call the e okay and then you can actually then using the fact that p square equal to 0 you can show that if you start from here Okay, then you can show uh, that n hat can be written in this form. Okay. Okay, so now uh, we write, so you can write p mu, the null momentum in this way. So e one comma n hat with z bar. Okay, so basically, so you can see that p mu is actually it's a function of three quantities, three independent E, Z, Z bar, okay? So this Z, Z bar, so these are coordinates on the sphere. Okay, and you have also this E, which is independent okay? from Z, Z bar. So because, and that is the expected A because P square equal to zero, so you have one, Equ equation and you have four co co components of p mu so you have three three in independent things okay which which i write as e z and z bar 
And in fact, a good way of parameterizing this is this, which I'll use. Okay. So now, uh, what is this omega? So this omega is e by one plus z z bar. Okay. So this just follows from here. Okay. From this equation, you can see. Okay. So now, so so the single particle states. So you can write it as P mu sigma or equivalently you can write it in terms of omega z z bar and sigma. Okay. Sigma is the helicity. Okay, so now um, okay, and similarly, what we can do is that we can talk about the creation annihilation uh, operators A and A dagger. So we can write as omega z z bar sigma, and similarly have the creation operator. Okay, and so with this, what we can do is that we can define an object, which I'll write in this way. Okay. Okay, so you can write, so let me, I define this field as and this integral transform. Okay, now what is this epsilon? So epsilon plus one, for creation of, well, so epsilon, so, okay, so let me just write it like this. So this E, uh, when epsilon equals plus one, you get E omega Z, Z bar sigma. So that is the annihilation of it. Similarly, epsilon minus one. So this is essentially the creation operator. Okay. So with this notation, you can define this object. Okay, this phi epsilon uh, phi epsilon h h bar z z bar this, and this epsilon. Okay. And this phi and this object, this operator. Okay, so I will define. Uh, so this is a this is called a conformal primary field. Okay, now what is H? H is delta plus sigma by two, h bar is delta minus sigma by two. Okay, delta is a, is a number which comes here. Okay, now, so what is uh, this object? So, so under SL, so first of all, the important point is that, so this operator, so this delta is the conformal dimension of this primaries. Yeah, so I, yeah, right. And sigma is the speed. So these are two dimensional. So, so these, these, it lives on the sphere because its coordinates are z, z bar, okay? And under Lorentz transformation, so that can be shown. I mean, you can use the Lorentz transformation pro properties of this A, A dagger. 
and then you can show that under Lorentz or SL2C, which acts on the sphere as a group of global conformal tra transformation, this phi epsilon h h bar z z bar, uh, Lorentz or SL2C, this, uh, this transforms like a primary operator. Okay, so how does it happen? So the point is that, so we, I mean, it is known that, uh, so this SL2C, so acts on the coordinates as a, as a group of conformal transformation. So that means uh, Z goes to some W, which is AZ plus D by CZ plus D. And similarly, Z bar goes to the complex conjugate of this, okay, where this ABCD, so that's an SL2C matrix. Okay. Now, under this transformation, you can use the law, Lorentz transformation pro properties of this AA dagger to show that this field. transforms like in the following way, which is essentially the transformation property of a conformal field. Where this W and W bar are here. Okay, so these are this is the W and W bar is the complex con conjugate of this. Okay, and this actually shows that the H plus H bar equal to delta. So that is the scaling dimension or the conformal dimension. And H minus H bar sigma. So that is the two dimensional spin and it is also equal to the helicity, okay? So the spin of the massless particle, uh, the spin of phi epsilon and which is equal to the helicity. Okay, so we know that sigma is the helix. So that's the thing. Okay, now, so now uh, what is more? So now once we have defined these fields, we, we can further define uh, this object as, we can define an amplitude, okay, which uh, let me write it. So this you can write as correlation function of these operators. So this is equal to this integral transform. You have just, so I know that how and uh, that, that how phi is given in terms of a, a dagger. So you can just uh, substitute this thing, okay? And then mm, you can get this relation. Sorry. 
Okay, now what is this? This is the S matrix element or the scattering amplitude in the momentum basis. The standard one, which you uh, compute in all quantum field theory books, I mean, the first one, okay? And then what is this A? So this A is, so this transformation, so this is sometimes called a uh, milling transformation. Okay. And this is also called a celestial amplitude or milling amplitude. Now, the thing is that, so this, the important point is that this can be written. So this is, so this is, uh, so this is the same. So this uh, says the special amplitude A is the same as the correlation function uh, of the primary operators, phi's. Okay, so this is essentially the object that uh, one is interested in. And so now what is the property of this thing? So under Lorentz transformation, so under Lorentz or global conformal transformation on S2, So how does this transform? So using the Lorentz in invariance, uh, so this you can write as So this W are the uh, so this W I is essentially A Z I. So this let me write so W J I mean I and J they are both run from one to n. So and this W J is just this. Okay, so this. Okay, so this is the object. And so, so this A, this celestial uh, amplitude, so that transforms, so this A, um, so the celestial amplitude transforms like, the correlation function in the in two D CFT. Okay. So these are the objects that the dual CFT. Now the thing is, thing is that since this transformation, so this uh, part, so this is an integral transformation, and so and the point is that once you know this a, 
so you can com compute s so you just have to uh, uh, invert this transformation now the point is that a is more uh, natural to com compute from the dual uh, perspective because it it uh, because of this uh, particular way it transforms so it's a, it transforms like, like the correlation function of a conformal field theory. And so it is uh, essentially, so this A, so this object is essentially the central object that we want to compute. It, it just makes it uh, simpler uh, because all the symmetries are extremely clear. Okay, compute in the dual theory. Okay, so this is essentially the thing. So basically, the dual. So the dual CFT two uh, should compute. A and then invert Melin transform to obtain S. Okay, and so if you can do this thing, that if you can find out the CFT two, which actu actually does this form computation. Uh, then, uh, then actually, you can say that well. So now we have some some kind of a holographic dual. Okay. So is is there any question at this point? Any question, guys? If not, you proceed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think, uh, well, so let me just uh, say a few things about the dual. So how to, well, so these things are, so some of these things are, uh, will look like, I mean, they look like the things that, the type of things that appear in two dimensional conformal field theory, but the main, uh, well, so the main things, uh, which is important here, is that so the dual CFT2 has the infinite number of symmetries. Okay. Now the dual CFT2 has infinite number of uh, symmetries. And the basic fact is that Okay, that the soft theorems satisfied by S matrix, okay, is essentially the word identities for these symmetries. Okay, now this is essentially the fact. So this is the basic fact. And this basically tells you, so now what kind of symmetries are there? So what is a soft theorem? So basically uh, soft theorem is something. So basically what is a soft theorem? Okay, so suppose you have a scattering amplitude where I mean you have some things incoming, some outgoing. Okay, and suppose you have one soft graviton or gluon. So let me just work with uh, graviton. 
okay with momentum say p mu or yeah or say k mu okay so you can since well i mean since it's a massless particle you write this as in this way and the soft graviton is the object where for which e actually goes to zero so it's a very low energy uh, gra graviton okay and what happens now it is a basic fact uh, well i mean it is an important fact that suppose this is the n plus 1 particle scattering including the gra graviton okay so you write it as as n plus 1 say uh, okay let, let me write it as mm, k So you have a bunch of p mu's, which are essentially referred to say all these particles. Okay, so we, I call them their mo momenta as p mu, and this I write as k mu, and the e one comma n hat. And now, as this goes to zero. So what you get is some soft factor. This thing is called soft factor into the n particle scattering amplitude, which involving only the hard particles. Okay. So basically, what you can do. So this is essentially an expansion in parts of E. So in the case of graviton, this expansion will look like uh, 1 over e times something plus some e to the power 0 times something plus e plus dot 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 okay now this is called the leading soft theorem so This one is called the subleading. Okay. And this is called the sub subleading. Okay, now one can show so well. Now, if you think of them as word identities, then what one can show is that the leading soft theorem is essentially the word identities for super translations. And the subleading of theorem is equivalent to the word identity for, okay, I will not go into the details. This is called SL2C bar current algebra. So this is something which appear always appears, well, um, appears in some two dimensional conformal field theories. I mean, it, I mean this is a particular group SL2C bar, okay, and this one. Now the point is that what one can show, so these super translations and the SL2C bar current algebra, you also have something for the sub subleading soft uh, factorization, but the point is that, I mean, we will not need that. 
okay i mean uh, so let's just focus on these two okay okay so now uh, basically the point is that you have these super translations so what you can do is that so you can define the leading soft graviton okay so this is essentially okay omega into zero uh, well or If I recall this one, okay, and then you can also define. So this is the leading soft graviton. Okay, so I, I well. So if you have any question, you can ask. But I have to skip uh, all details because then those will not be here. And then you can define the sub leading soft graviton. Okay, so now, uh, okay, so, okay, so let me write down one word identity just to show you that what kind of word identities you get. So let me write down the word identity for the leading soft graviton. So this is essentially the soft theorem uh, written in this celestial basis. Okay, but this epsilon, of course, unknown. Now, what is this? What does this PK does? So this essentially decreases the scaling dimension by one. Okay, now what you can show is that this this one, so this object, so this is essentially the word identity for the super translation, okay? Similarly, uh, well, so you can basically define two super translation currents, okay, like this. So it turns out that this P zero Z and P minus one Z are the super translation currents. Okay. 
So you can do a mode expansion for them. So you can generate objects like this. Okay, these are the modes. And similarly, you can do the same thing with the subleadings of Graviton theorem. In fact, you can get this. Uh, so the subleadings of Graviton theorem. So in this modes, n runs from zero to infinity. No, n runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. Absolutely. So all, all integers. Okay. Okay, and then you have the subleadings of Graviton theorem. So you can decompose this in terms of three currents. Okay, and so basically we get these three currents J, A, Z, where A is zero plus minus one. So these are the SL2C bar currents, actually that you can show if you start from uh, the subleading uh, subgraviton theorem. And then, of course, you can define the modes of these operators, where in goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. You can compute the algebra of these operators, and the algebra is given by this. So this is the current algebra that one can obtain. Okay, uh, so here A, B, there are uh, zero plus minus one. Okay. Now, so we, we have all these things. So we have super translation, uh, super, uh, so these are, and these are SL2C bar current algebras. So this is PN comma zero, PN comma minus one. And then you have this J A N. Okay. So these are basically the conserved charges, and you have infinite number of them. And what is their algebra? So the point is that they commute. So so P N zero, P N minus one. They of course commute. And that is uh, the property of the super translation. And then this one is this. But then you also have the mixed commutators. Mm. Okay. So the sum of I'll write down some of the mixed commutators between super translation and the SL2C bar current algebra. And you have the other ones actually, like for example, G1 in physical things like that. Okay, so you have this infinite dimensional uh, symmetry algebra in the dual field theory, and that so basically the well, I mean, so these things are of course they are just algebraic, yeah, but the take home message is that so soft theorems. Uh, 
basically the word identity of symmetries. And the dual CFT has infinite number of symmetries. Okay, so this is essentially the take home message. Now, actually, what you can do is that uh, you can, so, well, so let me talk about a particular class of A S matrices, uh, which are called image V amplitudes. So these are three level amplitudes. Okay. Now, these MHV amplitudes are amplitudes of the form where you look at the scat, so MHV graviton, for example, you can also talk about gluons. Okay, so, but I have here, I have only talked about the, uh, the super translation of this. So, this, these are the gra graviton. So, MHV graviton amplitude, so this is minus, minus, and all plus. So, that means that. If I look at the scattering process, then two are minus helicity and the rest are all plus. Okay, now one particular, uh, so these. Okay, this uh, is computed in general relativity or GR. Okay, so that means just action is a root minus GR. Okay, so now you can actually compute this class of uh, amplitudes. Use, using this uh, symmetry algebra. And essentially, I mean, if you are uh, familiar with the, the basics, I mean, this is like uh, solving a minimal model in 2D CFT. So like a minimal model, not exactly a minimal model. Okay, so this is solved in the same way. So what you can do is that you can start, well, so what I mean is that you can find out, so you have this image V amplitudes. Okay, and that means that, so what you can do is that you can compute the A image V, the celestial, correlated. Okay, now using the super translation and SL2C, bar. One moment, what option I have? Current algebra. Okay, now what, what you can do is that, what you can do is that you can show that these, I mean, well, just as I said, that these are like the minimal models in 2D CFT. So what, so in this case, so you have this infinite dimensional algebra and what you basically do is that you look, so you look for null states of this algebra. OK, 
okay and you find so and then you can show that there are indeed these states and those null states decouple and what happen is that then the null state decoupling leads to differential equations for this scattering and amplitudes okay and then so these then you you can solve them to find out the scattering and amplitude and that is essentially the way but this uh, to this date actually so this thing uh, applies only to this particular class of uh, amplitudes which are called this mhd so mhd actually stands for maximal helicity violating okay and this can be done actually okay so so this can be done because of this fact that you have all these uh, infinite number of uh, c matrices so you have this so pn0 pn minus 1 and jn and going to this you can actually solve for the the scattering and amplitudes and this is one of the basically one of the success uh, of this uh, celestial uh, holography okay now this is well so this basically shows that you have some kind of a at least you have some kind of a theory so it seems that we have a we indeed show that we have a theory well that leaps on the celestial sphere and computes at least the image v amplitudes okay now our goal is basically to go beyond this and essentially so i can stop by saying like what are the goals so basically what are the things to do is that go beyond this beyond any and we choose okay so this is one of the things and then important is that understand the symmetries because it has more uh, symmetries and we don't uh, like well i mean there are other soft theorems so these are the things uh, that well so at least from this celestial uh, amplitude point of view so these are the things you can try to do and essentially the last thing of course the important one is is that understand uh, these things from the bulk 
asymptotic symmetry point of Okay, so I think I'll stop here, but I'll just say that, well, so I could not cover most of the things, well, the details are here. So you can, so I have recently given actually a set of eight uh, uh, lectures. So these are actually available in YouTube. Uh, so these are, uh, well, the links actually, I mean, these are essentially the, well, I mean, I don't but I think if you search, you can uh, get it. So there, actually, I discuss all these things in uh, in detail, like how do you get this, like in particular, how do you solve this thing and how do you look for the normal states? And I have also not talked about the OP, OPE structure because the OPE is actually, actually the important one. Because yeah, so one so one thing which I have actually glossed over is essentially the operator product expansion. Okay, so that uh, expansion on celestial sphere. So that plays a central role, like in any con conformal field theory. So those things are all explained there. So if you want to go like, if you want to learn more about it, then you can look at those uh, lectures and there are actually all the things are done in the detail, okay? Yeah, so I think I'll stop here. Uh, so you can, uh, so if you have anything to ask, you can ask me and then if that re requires, then I'll go into the de details of that, okay? Yeah, no. I think I yeah. So guys, if you have any question, please yeah. ask. And uh, yeah, thank you, Shamik, for giving this talk. And uh, thanks. Uh, like guys, you can ask question. And before that, give a clap for him for giving such a nice talk. So yeah. Hello, uh, excuse me, yeah. can I ask a question, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the F of algebra you wrote, uh, that uh, seemed vaguely equal to and similar to root algebra uh, that doesn't include central charge term. Uh, so uh, uh, which, al which al algebra? In, in 2D CFT, it's wheat algebra, they say, uh, before coming yeah, to... But it's not wheat algebra, actually. So this algebra is not. So this is the SL2C bar. Uh, Cochrane co algebra. Okay, so uh, so you have this Cochrane J A N A is zero plus minus one, and then commutator is this. And what is weak algebra? Weak algebra is you have this uh, generator aliens, okay? Right. And then that algebra is this. So it's a one index object. So you don't. So this is this. And this. so, yeah, so they are not same actually. So one is uh, right. So you have this. M. I mean, this is a, a, this is essentially a two index object, and this is a one index object. Uh, okay. So is that clear? Yes, yes, uh, yes. That's clear. Uh, so I'm just wondering uh, the central extension term that we uh, central charge term. Yeah, that we so, have here? Yeah, not yeah. So the point is that so you you could have this term. Plus some term k plus right. zero. Yes. Now in this case, this k is actually zero. 
Oh, I see. So that's why so for this particular the MHV graviton case. Or well, no, it is not a property because the thing is that this, as I said, so this algebra has nothing to do, to do with this uh, scattering. In the sense that so these all so they all come from these uh, subleading soft graviton case. So this one. So and that is of course true for any scattering amplitude, not just not just uh, MHV amplitude. Okay. Now the MHV amplitudes are special because of the fact that they basically of this thing um, that uh, so this uh, it is essentially just this. So you can exactly solve them. I mean, just uh, using this SLC bar and the super translations. Okay. But those symmetries are still there in in non in 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 in, in MHVM amplitudes all also. But the thing is that to the I mean, so uh, so as far as you know, you can't really solve for them just just by using this. So you need more things. So that is essentially the thing. So basically, the point which I emphasized was that uh, I mean, well, I mean, let me again go to this actually, which is that this you have this uh, soft theorem, right? Right. And the thing is that the take-home message should be that this soft theorem is the same as the 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 word identity for this uh, thing. Now the thing is that so these uh, factorization th theorems they of course don't depend on which particular scattering amplitude you look at. So that's why these things so these algebras have nothing to do with the with the image. Yeah. Thank you. So it's like. Uh, for example, in the 2D CFT case, the simplest one, like the ones which BTV considered in their year. So there, I mean, I mean, so you have the Virasoro algebra. Okay. And yes. the point is that you have so so Virasoro algebra, so that is a symmetry for every conformal field. Okay. So that's what basically two-dimensional conformal field theories are. But the thing is that only, I mean, if you look at, uh, okay, if uh, uh, unitarity, if you impose that, then you can show that only for some special values of the central charge in this in interval, you, you can solve uh, those conformal field theories just based on the this L, L algebra and those are the basically the unitary uh, minimal models okay but the thing is that uh, as i said like it's a symmetry for every two dimensional conformal field theory but only for this special values of C, you can solve for the conformal field theory just in terms of the, just uh, using the V, V plus algebra. And that is exactly what is hap hap happening here. So these algebras, so they of course don't depend on which particular amplitude you look at, but the point is that there is a class of and, and amplitudes which you uh, which can be solved just based on this data. Yes. So yeah. So that. Uh, next sir. Thank you. Thanks. Robin, do you have any question? Robin, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. I'm there. No, no. Uh, not any questions for the time being. I'll watch the recorder section and we'll uh, ask if I, ha I will have some questions. Okay, sure. 
So thank you, Shami. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Stay yeah. safe and healthy. And this talk will be posted in my channel. I will share the link with you. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually going there. So once the lockdown will be finished, maybe things will be better later. We will see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bye. Okay. Okay. Bye.